Hi, I'm Dwight Lee, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This module is going to be on labor economics. In other words, how you um, pay your workers and, and how you use pay to uh, get workers to overcome that prisoner's dilemma problem that we talked about earlier. Henry Ford was famous because he came up with the $5 day at a time when the average pay for automobile workers was $2.20 a day. What you had was a situation where he had a lot of turnover, had a high absentee rate. It was very costly for Henry Ford to continue to hire people. Let's look at this uh, little bit of information. He had a 370% turnover rate, Henry Ford did, in his plants in 1913. He had to hire 52,000 workers a year just to keep uh, 13,600 on the job. Had a 10% absentee rate. There wasn't a lot of productivity because people weren't used to working together with the same team. There were always new people coming in that didn't know quite how to you know, work with the others, hadn't kind of got the routine down. And of course, a lot of people just didn't show up, a 10% absentee rate. So in 1914, Henry Ford, over the objections of his board, raised the price, the wage that he was paying, from $2.20 a day to $5 a day. Immediately, there was fantastic results from the point of view of productivity and turnover. Turnover dropped by six, dropped to 16% in 1915 from 370% the year earlier. Productivity increased uh, by about 50%. Plus, you didn't have to spend a lot of money hiring and training new workers. That was a very expensive proposition. The annual profits increased from $30 million to $60 million from 1914 to 1916. Now, some of that was because Henry Ford was expanding, the Ford plant was expanding. Some of that increase would have occurred anyway. But Henry Ford himself uh, argued that a great deal of that increase was the result of paying workers more money and getting better workers and reducing the turnover. Now, what's interesting is it was more than just you know reducing turnover. Henry Ford, by paying that additional amount of money, that was a lot of money in those days, what he was able to do was impose a lot of discipline on his workers. Some people thought he was fairly harsh on his workers. Uh, it was not uncommon. Well, it was fairly uncommon after this was done a few times for Henry Ford's employers, uh, his foremen, to basically physically uh, intimidate and sometimes physically punch out a worker who was loitering, who was not doing the job. Now, we don't recommend that type of uh, uh, personnel policy today, but it had the effect, and, and it wasn't something that was common because once one guy got beat up, uh, the other people took notice and uh, they kept working, they worked hard. And the point was is that they worked hard because they were getting paid this big bonus and they were all better off because of the bonus and because of the discipline because it overcame a big prisoner's dilemma of the type we talked about last time. Workers knew that if they all worked together, they'd all be better off and they would justify the $5 a day but if they weren't disciplined, if they didn't have the motivation of the $5 a day, they would have all kind of shirked and things would have been much worse, even from the point of view of the workers. So this $5 a day that Henry Ford installed in 1914 is a very interesting example of how pay can be used to everybody's advantage, Henry Ford's advantage, the workers' advantage, by allowing this prisoner's dilemma 
uh, we talked about last time, shirking to be overcome. Now I want to point out that nobody recommends just paying more and then beating up your workers today. Today we have much more subtle approaches uh, and effective approaches uh, to getting people to work hard. For one thing, you couldn't use this today because many times you have a situation where the person who is setting up their desk, maybe gazing out the window with their feet on the desk, is not shirking at all, but having a very productive moment coming up with ideas. We rely much more today on information than we do on physical uh, strength, on physical um, activity. And so it's harder to tell when a person is shirking. So today we need much more subtle approaches to uh, paying and motivating workers, uh, much more humane approaches too, I might add, and we'll be talking about those later. So I appreciate you being with me on this. We look forward, I look forward to seeing you in a future module.